Okay, grade 12. So let's look at three categories of your financial indicators. It's a heading that says it's just after task 4.2. It says financial indicators relevant to companies. And now you can see I've got a picture here on liquidity. He's asking the boss, my body is 60% water. How could I fail a liquidity test? Okay, so what is the point of this? The point is liquidity has actually got nothing to do with water. It's got everything to do with cash or money. See, so I've got you some pictures to make it interesting. I feel like a primary school teacher, but yeah, we're just going to go with it to keep your concentrations going. Okay, so the first one there that they mention is the net current asset. Just go back to the, the first two paragraphs there. They mention working capital, and it will come up later for companies. Make sure you know what that is. That's the money you have available, the funds that you have that you can spend on assets or stock or anything that you can obtain to make you money. So first of all, they're looking at the net current assets. Okay, when you're doing the net current assets, it's a simple calculation. You're taking your CA and you're going to minus your CL. Current assets minus your current liabilities. And your answer then gives you your net current assets, or you can even refer to it as your working capital. So we'll just say net CA. That's the easy one. That's the first one. Then we're going to the next one, number two, which you've been doing since grade 10, the current ratio. The current ratio also very easy. If you've got your financial statements in front of you, you're taking your current um, assets, put next to your current liabilities, and then you come up with a ratio saying two to one or one to one. So let's say, for example, on this side, you have got 300,000 rands worth of current assets. And on this side, you have got 100,000 rands worth of current liabilities. You can simplify it, but my suggestion is to take this left-hand side in your calculator. You're going to put in 300,000. Then you're going to divide it by the right-hand side, 100,000. And whatever your answer is, you're going to put here, 3, 2, 1. So the right-hand side will always be 1, and the left-hand side will be your answer of that calculation. They do not work with norms anymore, but you can comment on the context of the business and how well it's doing. It means for every liability they have, they have got three current assets. And current assets are basically your stock, your debtors, and your cash. So this is looking very good. Their liquidity is of no concern. They are very liquid. But you can't say that. Okay, their liquidity is doing well. Then the one they the most often ask. Okay, so liquidity, water coming out of the tap, you get that, money. Mm -hmm, funny. So what happens here with this one, though, is... You normally, you just had one that said CA against CL. But now we're going to take one step further. And let's say it's coronavirus time, COVID-19 to be specific. And now you, you got your stock and you can't sell your stock. But you are hoping that you will still get your debtors to pay receivables. Because, I mean, they bought the stuff before. So you still need to collect that. And you're still holding on to your cash because your cash is your cash. And now you can put that against your current liabilities. Nothing changed on the right-hand side. On the left-hand side, I've removed something. And what is that? I briefly mentioned that. Yes, it's your inventories or it's your stock. So that's gone missing. It's not part of the equation because you're doing an asset test. Now, apparently I've done some research. I didn't know the actual meaning of the asset test. It actually refers to gold. And if you're testing if gold is real or not, in this instance, you are testing if your liquidity is real or not. So you'll be worried or not. Another way to put it is to say the CA, I'm going to say or, you take the CA minus inventory. So you take out all your stock and you put that against your current liabilities. So at the end of the day, you have got X amount of debtors and cash available in comparison with the current liabilities that you owe. So this one is much easier to change into cash and to pay these people. They say stock is the hardest thing to get rid of and to sell. Comment that we normally have on this, if you're going to go back to, let's say, the previous one, our current 
let's say our current ratio was three to one. Now we're saying we're doing this one and the answer that we come up for the acid test ratio, now we're saying is 0 0.221. Immediately there's some alarm bells going off. Once you removed your stock, you don't have much assets left. So that means a lot of your current assets are tied in stock and that's not good necessarily. You do need to balance it out with some cash and some debtors. So hopefully these two equations are quite similar, but there's not a big difference between the two. And then I've got this funny okey here at the bottom. It says here, when financial analysts say a company has a bad liquidity, so you can actually use those word ratio, and someone still wants to invest, but that's none of my business. So my question to you is, would you invest in a company which is liquidity is not great? No, probably not. So if you know anything about accounting, you would advise the people to not invest in that kind of company. I'm going to the second one, if you continue in your textbook with me. This one is about the stock turnover and the stock holding period. So there's two formulas actually here that they use, and you can decide which one you want to use. I'm going to show you at the end on your formula sheet where these ones are. The first one is one I prefer. It's just your turnover rate. So how often do you turn over your stock? So you're going to take your cost of sales, you're going to put that at the top, and then you're going to put your average stock at the bottom. And your answer is going to be something um, times per year. So you're going to be four times a year, 20 times a year, whatever. And that on in its own makes enough sense for me. So average, first of all, opening stock and closing stock divided by two. So you add those two. Cost of sales is normally there and it's given to you. So if you are selling clothes, three to four times a year is good because that means that's seasonal and it's changing. But if you're a grocery stop or a supermarket, that's what they call it, and this says three to four times, that is not good. You should be changing your stock, stock a lot often. So that, my English has gone 24 times a year. Really often get rid of those perishables, otherwise you're gonna have to throw them away. And then, the, if you go to the next page, it's still in the section of your stock turnover. If you wanna look at the period of time that you are actually sitting with that stock, you're gonna to have to add some days. So now what they do is they put the average stock at the top. Confusing? That's not what we did previously. And then at the bottom, you put the cost of sales. So you switch that one. Whatever it was here, you do it here differently. And now you can say 365 days and your answer will be in days. So it will say you keep on, hold on to your stock for 10 days. That's awesome for a supermarket. You hold on to your stock for 60 days, that's very good for a fashion clothing store. So this one will give you answer in days and that will tell you times per year. There is another option that you can use and you put 12 here and that's how many months, how often, every four months, every three months you have to change over your stock. So do note between these two, it depends what they're asking for. Is it the rate? or they're asking for days or months, then you're gonna be more specific. Sometimes you can decide which one you'd rather use. So that's my stock. And then last one, number three, let's go to this one. And now it's on my debtors and my creditors. I'm looking at my collection period of time and how often I make my payments. So for my debtors, how often am I getting money? And this one is specifically in days. Okay, so you're going to have to add 365. So it's similar to the calculation we just did for stock period. So you're going to take your average debtors. So you look at your two financial statements last year and this year's. Look at your debtors control or let's say your trade and other receivables. Put the average on top, meaning last year, this year divided by two. And underneath, you're going to refer to your credit sales. A lot of the time they give you total sales. Just make sure you work with credit sales, just the ones that relate to the data. And because we want the answer in days, we're going to say 365 days. 
and that will give you an answer in days. So your creditors pay every debtors pay every 30 to 60 days. Hopefully, that is the measurement you'll take there. That is what we normally do. So they pay us before we have to pay our creditors. So now we go down to the creditors one. Similar principle for the creditors. We're going to say my average creditor. Again, you're going to look at last year and this year's trade and other payables. Add the two, divide it by two. And then at the bottom, you're going to put your credit purchase. Not just your total purchase, your credit purchase. And 365 days a month, ugh, a year. And therefore, my answer will be how many days it takes. And in this instance, you are hoping for 60 and 90 days. Do note the difference between those two. The top one is because you want your debtors to pay earlier so you can have the cash. And the bottom one is you wait a bit and then you pay back your suppliers. And that is the calculations. And then if we go here, just to show you, this is the sheet you get at the end of the year. So it's just typed out differently but they do mix them up i just want to see you show you how it's spaced out so for example these ones with the purple was our first number one it referred to my current assets and my working capital then we went to our inventories and that's the pink ones there's one and there's one this one is the rate and that one is the period so you're looking at days similar both of them refer to my stock and then these two in the middle are referring to the debtors and the creditors. So just as a matter of interest, you will have those formulas. You're just going to have to know which ones go with which.